Thank you, guys. Thank you guys for having me. It's good to be dumping again. We'll have to do this properly in a structured format because you do need to read. But read, it's like the read v read. <laughs> it's, it's the, uh, the cyberpunk manual. It's just not for everyone. <laughs> that one out. It's I, just not for everyone. I need. To, Reading isn't no. It's it, it's. I'm sorry, but that's such a terrible position. Saying no, I will not read things. I mean, I have uh, read a few things. Come on, I read, I read I read a I read a 250 page book today in about three hours. You can do it. Yeah, and that's <laughs> that works for you. It's not the method I use. The thing is, I have I have read a few things, and um, I read uh, Robert Greene's Laws of Power. I read uh, 1984. I read a few basics, and they were good. And, and maybe you know, possibly possibly they did affect my thinking a bit. I mentioned earlier something from 1984 as, a, as part of what I believe. But if I allow myself to use the words and thoughts of others, it will limit the structures that I can construct myself. The structures are no less true because I'm not borrowing someone else's structures. I may disagree with those people uh, in history. What, what's the problem? What's the problem with what's the par- problem with uh, reading some of the greatest thinkers throughout history and synthesizing that? I mean, this is something that we talk about in academia, right? Is that there's thesis and synthesis, and then there's uh, creation, essentially. It's like the third form. Yeah. The, the so more that you, I, I mean, um... creating your own idea. Yeah, but you, but but here's the thing: in order to, to end up at, at the third form, right, that you're coming at. So, like, thesis is just, or, or in terms of like the the. the the ways that we analyze uh, data, right? Uh, like the first level is just being able to read it and understand it, um, and re- and report on what it says. Synthesis is when you're able to take a whole bunch of ideas from extant data and then come together with them to form a sort of new idea, or to 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 come to a totality of what all of those data mean in concert with one another. And then the last form of knowledge is being able to create new ideas, but that is reliant upon the previous two steps. So that's what I think Scrub and I were talking about about you about the necessity or the importance of reading um, extant Aiden, thought in order to come to your own, yeah. Why do you need to get that thought from books? Why can't you get it from be- because observing reality have, instead? Be- because other people have thought what about if, it what for if they're, a what very if long time. Wrong? What if they're all wrong? The thing is, Aiden, you should still, what, in my what, opinion, you should, you should still a have free access to that to understand does, if they're wrong or not. What a free thinker does is they figure out their own theory first, with influence from outside forces, but oh, without no. without looking at some great ream of data to to construct it for them, then Mm-mm. they measure what they've theorized against the data of the world in a more uh, uh, comprehensive sense. Because at that point, once they Mm-mm. have a, a, a framework that they're confident about, that they have built themselves, they don't have to worry about someone else building their framework for them. Now, Occasionally in history, you uh, need to not stand on the shoulders of giants. Occasionally in history, you need to tower above them on your own. And occasionally in history, that happens. And for whatever reason, that is what I am best at. I, I don't care what someone else may have said in the past. I don't care to, to, to verify my own opinion by the fact that someone's thought it before. I, if, if, if I've come up with it and it turns out to be true, and no one can give me a convincing reason to believe it isn't, then I didn't, I didn't need them in the first place. Um, How many times, Aiden, look, have I, I predicted something that you later say, oh, yeah, that's true, that's in the data? There's oh, been sure, many times we times. disagree, uh, but it's happened. I haven't read that data. I haven't read the study, but I figured it out. No, exactly. Well, uh, you right, can to be do fair, this I'm, I'm a without social. using someone to else's be fair, I'm a, to, Hang on, to be fair, I'm a social scientist, so all of our, our findings are ultimately uh, no shit. Uh, it's evidence in the obvious. But that being said, um, it, it, so if you go to write an academic paper, the first thing you have to do is conduct a literature review. Um, you, you should do that before you form your hypothesis, so that you have an understanding of have to be what literature. the extant data are, Doesn't, so that you can... Again, we're talking about politics. I mean, that, that's the, the way... That, the unknown. But, 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 uh, no, po- politics, it, politics guessing. science, all of it. Garrow is no, talking about general it, relativity. It is, we're not talking about things that you can measure here. Politics, it's and psychology. There's so many factors, it's basically impossible it to measure. It is 1,000% quantifiable. Of course it is. You can't Everything quantify, is, every single you can thing quantify, is quantifiable quantify about specific it. claims. But you can't quantify no. the overall picture. Yes, you can. You can quantify all of it. The big, the problem that you get no. into there is that when you get into a multiple in regression model, then you end up the, the, the R squared goes up and the individual R evaluation goes down. That's the only in thing. In principle, you can, but the only way to make um, accurate statements about modern politics, which are broad, is heuristics. If you try to use science to do it, it's too slow, too uh, minute, and too sensitive to factor changes. 
So it's very useful and very important for certain precepts, and you can build heuristics sure, based sure, on sure. science. Yes, yes. But that's ultimately, the, it's heuristic. The, the, the and what that means is that ultimately, of heuristics, yeah. every author in history is giving their opinion in in uh, theoretical physics, in 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 you know, in sci- actual scientific fields that don't relate to almost infinite factor um, realms of discourse. It is verifiable, measurable, and a simple claim. In politics, it is. There's so many factors. No, there's no way. It's it's into the realm of heuristics. Yeah, at that point. you can't. So it's know. everyone's opinion, no. and I don't need to hear their opinions no, to I, form my I, own. I fundamentally disagree. You can absolutely measure everything involved with politics. In principle, yes. I, and I've but done it. Practice, I've, been doing, no. I've been doing it for years. In principle, it, yes. In practice, you will never be able to measure enough that you can predict everything that will happen in the immediate future. No matter how no matter how good your theory is, there's going to be factors that happen in reality because there's just too many of them that confound it. There's always going to be confounds, but you can adjust for that via statistical analysis. That becomes heuristic if you do it well no, enough. Just, how statistical? An- Wait, hang on. How? Whoa, hang on. How is statistical analysis heuristic? If you put, if in you fact, include, you, you, if you include right. the necessary almost infinite number of factors, it will essentially become heuristic, or it'll be too much science to no, do. No, no. I mean, Aiden, what you're that, talking about what here is, is, for. is examinations of specific claims, which can account for a range of perhaps that's ten you, that's factors. Why you do you're, that's why you do funnel you're, plot you're ta- plots. You're talking about something very limited. What what it what is what, what it has dominion over? What it's making claims about? It's very good at. And I'm sure that's the case. We, and it, it, it's scientifically. You and I have agreed plenty on, on all these studies. We're not, I'm not contending the scientific method here. What yeah, I'm I saying know. is that relying on it as your exclusive means to discover the truth about politics is never no, going it, to work in practice. It's not. I'm not, I'm not relying. This Again, is what Scott Penner talking about. Is, is I'm not relying only on science. I'm not relying only on science, which I am to a certain degree. I'm also relying on the wisdom of people who know more than I have, do, who spent their entire lives trying to understand this stuff and mm-hmm. not relying on it in terms of a uh, inherent uh, uh, deferral to, but rather than to take the things that they have said and to synthesize it in my own mind and come up with my own ideas based on that. I don't just um, constantly repeat the things that Eric von Kunat Lenin said, even though he was the guy who really just, who really turned me over to the monarchy um, sort of side of things. He was the one who finally convinced me his work did, but he's not the only one. Um, so I think I think the point that Trump was making and that I am reiterating here is that it is worth reading the knowledge of people who have spent their lives trying to figure these things out. Um, because, well, yes, you can come to your own um, conclusions based on observation. It's still worth um, comparing and contrasting that at least, if nothing else, than to the knowledge of the past. Yeah. Does that and make I, sense? I have done that. That's why I read a few books that okay. I read. And it, they, they, were, they were quite useful, those that I read. But there were also some I started mm. reading that I thought were a total waste of my time. The, the thing is, um, <laughs> Aiden, that you don't... For, 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 again, for science, yes, you should read what's already written because they've measured it. And they're cl- they, what you're dealing with are ultimately simple claims granted complex matter, but simple claims about specific things which are fundamental and which are, you know... Um, uh, unchanged. Yeah, and to see if they lie in their data, which they do all the time. But if you go to politics, there's just too many factors for that to be practically useful on a large scale. There is always going to be heuristics, and yeah, even, I even then, disagree. even then, for most of history, the idea of a scientific approach to human nature has been very vaguely understood, if not totally not understood. It's always had other things in there, theology and uh, and um, usually of just course. usual uh, you know, social philosophy. understanding and, yeah. and, and various forms of philosophy, yeah. So back in the past, you know, all those things, okay, so what, what you're saying is only from the last 150 years or so, if, if, if we're extrapolating the argument. No. I, I know that's not what you think you're saying, but it's what you, say, it's what you sound like you're saying, <clears throat> that if, if we're looking for things that are measurable, then we're looking at people that have tried to do science on human thinking, which is which is not even the last 150 years, it's even less than that. But if we're just but, looking no, for no, but comparing I, I'm saying, opinions, I, 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 that's fine, but I, you don't need to do that to get a good understanding. You can do a, a sort of scientific method, you know, a good enough one, one that is applicable to the realm of heuristics, to the realm of, of mass heuristics of politics, yourself based on the information that you read. And one of the ways that I do that is I allow chat to tell me when I'm wrong, and I'm very open to that being done. There are other ways to learn aside from reading, and I have, I have often, not always, found reading to be useless for me. There's a few books, like two or three books I've read that are 
that were actually helpful. But most of them were a waste of time, and I don't have any interest in reading any more of them. And the more I do, the more it will structure my thinking. You have no idea, Aidan, with the greatest respect, how much it may have structured your thinking, and neither does Scrum. And it, what, which books you read is um, going to determine how, what you're convinced by as well. The, there's your primacy theory as well. But, uh, yeah. Uh, what I would say, though, is that like, I, I try to, and what I think that we were both advocating for, at least for me, um, was, of course, I say to, to read scientific literature, because that's what I do. The, the, predominantly, that's what I do. But I think that it's also worth reading what other people have to say um, or, or have, have thought about this in the past. You don't necessarily have to agree with it. Again, I, I reread, like I said, I reread uh, Homo Ludens, which I read that book 10 years ago, and I thought it was like one of the coolest things I'd ever read. I reread mm-hmm. it today, and he, he's, he's um, uh, given a big to democracy and i i kind of had a <laughs> unlike a, a that very, other guy only for one page. A- yeah um what who eric von could not lead in uh, he does not it's not a he gives a very very well reasoned uh explanation as to why he supports monarchy but um that being said uh I, I think that it's just it is worth listening to to things that people have said in the past um and, and these i think a lot of them have interesting things to say uh and and give us different perspectives on that that are not necessarily data driven so it needs to be somewhere I think that the best way of coming to your own conclusions is to base it on data, to base it on philosophy and the wisdom of others that is not an appeal to authority, because I'm not saying to just adopt everything that someone who is a quote-unquote authority figure, and by the way, understand also that some quote-unquote authority figures have been unseated over the course of history because they have ideas that are heterodox, correct? So that like there's some things that you're not allowed to read. Um, it doesn't matter what they were supposed to be an authority in. Like, for example, um, the guy who discovered the double helix, what's his name? Um, he made some claims about race and IQ, and now he's been completely... He lost his Nobel Prize. I'm sorry, what's his name? Um, he didn't lose his Nobel Prize as far as I'm concerned. Was it not... It wasn't Watson. That's not the right name. No, I, I know uh, who you mean it. There's no need to find the name. Yeah. Again, you can... You can yeah. And this is my point. You can make the case without knowing the name. And do, do you, do you, do you realise sure. how, how useless and in a way lazy it is for someone to say, I disagree with you, therefore you should read politics? Tell me what I got wrong. <laughs> And if you can't, <laughs> then that's on you. You read politics and come back to me when you know. <laughs> so I'll figure out my uh, own way of deciding well, it, it, what is true about reality. My way of doing it is not well, to it, ignore reality and simply build it out of nothing. My way is to appre- approach the heuristic of reality, build theories and test them against what is what I observe, partly against what I read people saying. And I have heard the opinions of loads of philosophers throughout history. I just haven't directly read them. If I, It doesn't matter. I don't care who said it. I care what is said. The idea is what matters. And I've tested the ideas. And I have found the ones I adopted worthy and the ones I didn't adopt wanting. There are multiple yeah, ways um, of approaching the truth. The way that is most useful for the sciences, for things that need to be measured, is what you're saying. And where, where, where you... Where, empiricism. Where, well, yes, direct empiricism. But where there are measurable... Um, qualities, which I'm not convinced there are in social sciences, but it's 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 a, a lot more fuzzy in social sciences. Where there are measurable qualities, sure. yes, you should read what other people have already written. You should read the results they came to because you can skip some steps because it's definitely true. Even in social sciences, I'm not sure I'd accept that. In physics, yeah, there are some things that have been measured no, it, that it, almost it, certainly are completely true and will never almost change. Almost certainly, yes. Yeah. But in not in politics. Science, Holy to... shit, not in politics. Politics <laughs> is social science. Not in... Politics it, is social science. Partly, partly. But it's, it, it's, it's, if it is social science, then social science is woefully unprepared to explain politics. It is a tiny fraction. I disagree. Be, be, being a social scientist, I disagree. This is another interesting discussion. Um, and it's, uh, I've heard a lot of people saying this, and I know most people probably would disagree with me on this. Um, but... To some extent, the proof's in the pudding. Hate to bring myself up as an authority, but I'm not doing too badly on my chat. <laughs> if you think I'm wrong, that's that's. I'm well open to being told it, but I don't need the printed pages to tell me that. If someone can present it to me, then I will discuss it. Achilles says you will never convince a social scientist that their subject matter is too complex to measure because they dumbed it down as so far to be measurable. Social science is very competent at what it does. It could find results which are true, but I fear it often overestimates the frame in which they are useful. Gareth says, it sounds like you want to live in an inside-out okay. Plato's cave, or rather your shadows on the wall are projected by your subconscious. I, I don't know exactly what you mean by that, but I think what you're essentially saying is what I thought people might be saying before, where you think I'm generating this knowledge from nothing, from just inside me. What I'm doing is, in fact, an empirical process. 
It's less directly empirical. It's more softly empirical. Like social sciences are a soft science. It's softly empirical because I am forming a yeah, theory. Yeah, but we're making observations. And then, you, we, again, you're saying you're take, making it off of observations, which is exactly how social science works as well. That is correct. Sure. But or, what I'm doing is not um, far off from social science. It's just a bit more broad. We then turn those observations from a single observation into a mass observation so that we can make statistical inferences from it. Yeah? Which is different are, from the, what any one person can do. We're starting with forming a theory, which anyone can do. We're then continuing to test that theory in reality, which anyone can do. And then we're making not conclusions, but preliminary how conclusions. How do you start as to form the theory? Forward. Say again, sorry? How do you start to form the, how do you start to form the theory? Because in it, it, so if I if I'm going to go into right, so um, having done this before myself, if I'm going in to write a paper, I'm, I'm going to write a proposal to, to conduct a piece of research. The I first thing I have to do, I have an I, I'm just saying, I know, but I do. If I wanted to do a study, I have to go through the Institutional Review Board or IRB. So the first thing I'd have to do is, yeah, I would have to make an observation, but the, and they'd be like, oh, that's interesting. What is that? But then after I've made the observation, I then have to go read the literature to see if anyone else has studied it before, to see what they have said, to see that the, the totality of that literature. And then based on that and my observation, do I come together in synthesis to form a hypothesis? Mm -hmm. right? That's because you want your institution or your institution wants you not to waste their time by studying something that's already been studied. That makes sense. The thing is that waste is part of life. And sometimes you need to use wasteful methods to do something that's never been done before. Sometimes you need to do the thought that has been done by someone else in case you figure out something slightly different in that that you wouldn't have figured out had you just read their research. And Nothing then you can what change I just said the would world that. with a new theory. If you build from the ground but up I'm... without trusting someone else to build part of that tower for you, you can find something that no one's ever found before. You can find a way of thought that could change everything else you believe. Building from the ground up is a fundamental discipline of thought, which is, it should be how science is done. But unfortunately, people, I think, stand on the, the shoulders of giants too much. Again, in physics, it's fine. In social sciences, maybe not. If you are willing to trust um, their research a little, just a little, little bit more than you should, you might lose a huge breakthrough. And the thing is, yes, it's wasteful, because a lot of it is going to be the same. But I am willing to make that journey. I am willing to, to roll my own path, especially in politics, which is so subjective. Again, I disagree fundamentally on that. But in terms of social science, I would say though, like no, no, no. The, the reason to to go through that is that you've made some, you have have had an idea, but then you want to go see if someone else has had the idea to see what they said about it. Doesn't mean that you change your idea just be, necessarily, but you Not have to have that in your mind. But you you are I likely you to should. eventually. Yeah. You know, the more the more you consult other people's work before you have formed a strong theory, the more your theory is going to be based on their work. And the more the more likely you are to miss something. Which is why science builds upon itself, which is a problem, to be fair, I admit. So a major issue with science is that if, if the initial research is faulty, but if you're a good scientist, then you would know to be able to recognize if the, if the, mm -hmm. the, the, the uh, foundational data are wrong. And for 15 and, years, and good scientists that, like, studied Alzheimer's based on a faulty premise. Yeah, I know. Look, I, look, what do you think I talk about all the time? So the whole point of my channel is to, is to talk that's shit about academia. That's what you're doing. You're, you're doing what I'm doing by a different means. You're, you're correct in what you're doing, mm. but we have a different approach. You, I mean, you would mm -hmm. agree, I think, that rationality can be dangerous and that common sense, whilst it's, it doesn't always get to the answer as directly or precisely or reliably, it is a more stable way for a society to run. That sometimes people that think in a very rational mode are not commonsensical. <laughs> they, they, they can't yeah, understand yeah, people yeah, sure. very well. They're not wise. And for day-to-day -day life, yes, and for day-to-day -day life, what we call common sense is absolutely fine. It's and, the lessons and, and of the normative evolution. way of operating. It's four billion well, otherwise years. Otherwise, you end up like me, and, and you become neurotic comparison. about everything, and overthink everything, and, and try to apply calculations to like regular shit mm. you do in your day to day life, and you don't want to do that. That's so. a worthy <laughs> pursuit. That's a worthy pursuit, and I hope you and others continue. But it's not the only path to truth. Yeah, I understand that. I got where you're coming from. Garrow Shall says, we continue um, then? I think I think we've mostly included it. Well, this is very interesting to me. It's uh, the nature of epistemology. Garrow says, why do you feel that social science yes. shouldn't be evidence-driven or repeatable and progress? I don't think that. I don't know why you think I think that. Um, I don't, it's not what he said, though. No. Garrow says, the major issue with your approach is that it means nothing could ever be accomplished in a field that requires more than 30 to 50 years of study or research and atomically an IQ of about 170. I'm not sure what you mean or how you've arrived at that conclusion. Maybe you could explain what you mean a bit better there, Garrett. 
Um, by the way, again, I'm not saying you can't stand on the shoulders oh, of giants. Saying, I'm just saying, saying that, that he's, sometimes I, I, you shouldn't. I think what he's saying is that for people to be able to come to uh, their own conclusions, the way that you're describing, mm. uh, based on individual observation without any kind of out, uh, outside influence, you need to be like an extreme high high, high IQ homie, mm. right? You've got to have like 170 IQ. Um, in, otherwise, in, you're um, probably not going to be able to do that with any kind of accuracy. Yeah, the more precise the answers and the more expensive it is to get them experimentally, the higher your IQ and wealth needs to be to get, them to, get to them yourself. So in something like physics, oh wow, you would need to be smart and wealthy to arrive at all those conclusions independently. For social science, yeah, still, you'd need to be pretty smart and wealthy, not, but not as smart and wealthy, I don't think. No. As with physics. Oh no, Lord, I'm not going to talk my field up, man. We're full of midwits. In my opinion, politics is almost the bottom of that scale. <laughs> in my opinion, politics, you need to be like 125, 130 maybe IQ, and uh, you don't need a lot of wealth. And you can figure this shit I, out I yourself we, for the most part. I, I guess what I, uh, just to, to kind of cap this, when I say that politics can be studied in this way, it's because politics is social science. So I know exactly how to study all of this stuff. I've, I've read hundreds and hundreds of studies. Uh, identifying all kinds of aspects of politics mm. and how it influences people, how it affects them psychologically, emotionally, uh, sociologically. So, I, I mean, like, I, considering I've read some of these these studies, and I do think that you can predict for a lot of the stuff, you can account for it, um, and and via those sort of data, then you can make longitudinal predictions about how things will happen. I, I do think that there's there's value in the social sciences in that. Let's. Uh, it is funny. I, I mean, yeah. unless you want to. Continue to. I, I do think that the social sciences are, and that's it's outside of the social sciences. It's also, again, like I said, what people who are just super intelligent have had to say. It's worth sometimes reading. It's also worth reading what idiots have to say sometimes to see what they mm. think. I, I I believe that as well. To, just seeing what absolute words think to 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 see the other side of things. Mm. Well, I have a pattern whenever I enter a new field of try it yourself for a while, and once you are happy with where you are, once you feel like you can't move on, then look something up. When I've done that. I've often found something really interesting or impressive or useful, like with programming. I tried for myself for ages, accidentally discovered object-oriented programming, or accidentally invented object-oriented programming from the ground up, having never known what it was, and then read about object-oriented programming and learned Java. Not the best choice, but still. That's the kind of thing yeah. I do. I build it myself, and then I can consult with other people to see how well, they built it. Once I have yeah, my I mean, idea... Yeah, yeah. Then I have it. That's mine, and no one else. No one can say that I was influenced to a you know significant degree by someone else's model. Then once I've built it, I can read several opinions and think, compare them, not just build mine based on the blocks that they give me with a few modifications. Because there's a risk of it going that way. There's a risk of you not really building it yourself. Once you have, once you have no opinions on something, and you hear other people's opinions, you. Yourself, Aiden, in the stream, have told me about the primacy effect and the recency effect as well. That's going to influence you. No, no, no matter what you do, it's going sure. to influence you a little bit. R my policy has uh, always uh, been build it myself, then see what other people have done once I'm happy with it. That's what I'm doing in politics, but it takes a lot longer because politics yeah. is so subjective. And again, with, with what Gareth said, yes, waste is part of this process, but there's less waste the more subjective the field is. Politics is pretty much the yeah, most yeah. subjective field. Maybe the R squared, by the way, on the recency effect is is a bit uh, okay. not great. Uh, I'm sure but I think the, the point though is that you're seeing, important. which would, yes, pri primacy effect is is, is a very robust. Yeah, I would um, guess so. I think that the, the thing that that all of us agreed on, but I think that we were um, miscommunicating on miscommunicating about was that at you, uh, Scrump, and I are all autodidacts to greater or lesser degrees. Sure. I think Scrump and I just have a different kind of idea of how to go about autodidactism. Yeah. Uh, maybe and that's all it was. Maybe I'm an autodidactism extremist. I can take that label. <laughs> I'm willing to take on that label. There you go. All right, autodidactic extremist. Works for me.